should we be having compassion and empathy for anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers, particularly those who have gone out of their way to spread their message? Or should we be uh, expressing to them and about them uh, disgust? I raised this, uh, a couple of stories in today's news. Uh, one, Clay Higgins, he's a Republican uh, congressman from Louisiana, represents uh, Louisiana in the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, he announced yesterday that he has COVID for the second time. He got COVID back in February or March. He got it, you know, last year. And uh, as we know, or as we've talked about on this program numerous times, if you had the original, and this, if you had the original COVID, the Delta variant, or for that matter, the Alpha variant, the, the British variant, what you used to call the, the UK variant, uh, will reinfect you as if it's a whole brand new disease and can also kill you all over again. I mean, you know, if you didn't die the first time, it can make you so sick. That... And this is apparently what happened to uh, Congressman Higgins. And he uh, posted on Facebook, uh, you know, that uh, I keep my family's private business very quiet because of the evil in the world. Uh, so here, but here's an update. I have COVID, Becca has COVID, Becca is his fourth wife. Uh, my son has COVID. He says, we had it in January 2020 before the world knew what it was. This is our second experience with the Chinese Communist Party's biological attack weaponized virus. All right, talk about whataboutism. Gee, should people wear masks? Should they get a vaccine? Well, what about those Chinese, that Chinese lab? You know, it doesn't matter where it came from at this point. It would be interesting to know, but it, you know. But Higgins was a guy who back in, starting in May, was promoting the, uh, the idea that you shouldn't wear a mask. He said, uh, can you smell through that mask? Well, if you can smell through it, then you're not stopping any sort of a virus. It's part of the dehumanization of the children of God. You're participating in that dehumanization by wearing a mask. What you're wearing is a bacteria trap. It's not your health or it's not helping your health or anybody else's, he said. Yet I'm guessing that he would be the first guy to say that if he went into the hospital to have surgery, that he would want his surgeon to wear a mask, don't you think? He's also refused to say whether or not he's vaccinated, as have more than half of all the Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives refused to say whether they're vaccinated or not. I'd say fairly, you know, uh, reasonable guess is that no, he's not vaccinated. So there's Clay Higgins. And then there's one of my colleagues, Mark Valentine. Uh, excuse me, Phil Valentine. Uh, Phil has a brother named Mark who's talking about him to the New York Times. <laughs> Where is his name? And this is in today's New York Times. After COVID diagnosis, a conservative radio host sends a new message. He started, it started out, he, he announced his own diagnosis on July 11th. He said, uh, on the air. He said, I've got COVID and I'll be, uh, well, actually, he didn't announce on the air. He announced it on social media. Uh, he said uh, he was planning on returning to his show within a day or two. He said, unfortunately for the haters out there, it looks like I'm going to make it. Well, here's how COVID works. You feel kind of crappy. You get the nose swab. It comes back positive. And then over the next two weeks, very often, people just get worse and worse and worse, and they typically end up in the hospital. This is why uh, Dr. Feigelding, I believe, mentioned this morning, I, uh, it may have been somebody else that I'm thinking of, but um, that we're seeing now these diagnosis numbers sweeping across red states. You know, one in five new cases in the United States is coming out of Ron DeSantis' Florida, for example. Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri. We're seeing just an absolute explosion of, of COVID in these, in these places. And here in Oregon, the Oregonian, our, our statewide newspaper, I uh, had an article yesterday about how the red counties are starting to have huge numbers of diagnoses, whereas the blue counties, the counties that voted for Joe Biden, and there's, I think, five or six of them, uh, are not. We're not seeing that explosion of diagnoses in the blue counties. We are in the red counties. But the point is that right now we're seeing an explosion of diagnoses. In two weeks, we're going to see an explosion of hospitalizations. And that's what happened to Phil Valentine, this right-wing talk show host. Two weeks later, his radio station, 99.7 WTM, announced that he was in the hospital. 
he is in critical condition. Yesterday, his uh, family or his station, I'm not sure, oh, it was the station, the station put out this notice, quote, Phil would like for his listeners to know that while he has never been an anti-vaxxer, he regrets not being more vehemently pro-vaccine and looks forward to being able to more vigorously advocate that position as soon as he is back on the air, which we all hope will be soon, says the station manager. And what's the consequence of that? Well, poor Phil is getting hate mail. Phil is getting trashed on social media. Phil is getting blasted on Twitter and Facebook. Phil is, you know, Phil is going to have an interesting time when he gets back on the air. This is, I mean, we saw this with uh, Sean Hannity last week. Hannity, who is almost certainly vaccinated, you, you, I, it's the, the word is out, right? The New York Times outed this uh, last week, I believe it was, that Fox has their own internal passport. An anti, you know, a, a, it's called the Fox Clear Pass. And it may be that they're using Clear, the company. I, I mentioned earlier, I have a vaccine passport now through Clear. They're offering it. And you can use it to get on flights to Hawaii, and you can use it to get into sports venues. It's an electronic, digital, uh, it's a Clear Pass. And it's got a QR code on it, it's got your picture on it. And you, you can click on it, and it shows the details of exactly what you were vaccinated with and when and where. And, you know, poor Phil is now just, you know, people are coming after him. So what Sean Hannity did, you know, he works at Fox and he, 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 he was on the air and he said, you know, uh, maybe you should get vaccinated. <laughs> you know, I forget the exact words he had. I don't have it right in front of me. But, you know, he just, it was brief, but it was, uh, yeah, okay, you know, getting vaccinated is a good thing. And it was like the sky opened and, 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 you know, fire rained down on him. And the next day on Fox, he's like, oh, I didn't mean that. I'm, you know. Because now, apparently, just like everybody in the Republican Party has to bow down and kiss Donald Trump's feet, Donald Trump, in his most recent rant, you know, he's, he's back to doing his... I'm getting, uh, on average, about two emails a day from Donald Trump and people associated with him begging for money so that he can do his rallies. And then, you know, you read the fine print, and it turns out that the money is being used to pay for meals and transportation and accommodations. And so, you know, Trump has raised $75 million with this hustle so far this year. He had raised over $400 million before this year. And it's all apparently just going into Donald Trump's pockets. But, you know, he keeps this thing going, and, and the Republicans now all have to fall in line. There's another story in today's New York Times about another member of Congress who uh, initially came out and said, well, you know, I think we should take this virus seriously, and uh, I think that, you know, maybe we should be looking at January 6th. And now they're going, oh, January 6th, not, nothing to see here. No droids in this car. And uh, vaccine, what vaccine? Virus, what vaccine? <laughs> it's like, you know, is Phil Valentine going to have a job when he comes back? Is he going to have any listeners left? What this reminds me of, and I've been meaning to write an op-ed around this, and maybe I will one of these days soon, but what this reminds me of is the story of uh, Cortez the, uh, the uh, Spanish conquistador who took a, a large chunk of either the Mayan or Incan empire, my apologies, I always mix them up, you know, which one was where, um, and he marched into this Mayan or Incan city with just a few hundred soldiers. I mean, he just came with a couple of boats. And they just, to hand the city over to him, complete with rooms full of gold. That, and this is when Spain got really, really rich, you know, in the early 1700s as a consequence of this. They just handed it all over to him because they had completely lost faith in their leader who had claimed to be a descendant of the sun god that they worshipped. 
and their leader was unable to stop the flu, which the conquistadors had brought with them, but which tr traveled faster than they did. The flu came with the spies who came to the city to say, oh, look out, here come the conquistadors. And it killed like, you know, a large chunk of the city, of the people in the city. And at that point they were like, well, you know, our leader says he's God, but he can't protect us from the flu. Uh, maybe these Spanish conquistadors who seem to be immune to it, maybe we should trust in them. And dear leader was deposed essentially. Peter Farb talks about this in his book, Man, Man's Rise to Civilization, which is published back in the 60s, but it's a brilliant. And I'm wondering, and I'll put this to you as a question, we can talk about it uh, in this hour as well. I'm wondering if as people start seeing people around them, now that this Delta variant, this is apparently as contagious as measles, which is uh, the most contagious airborne spread virus known to man. This is apparently, the Delta variant is apparently more contagious than measles. So it's not a matter of if you're going to get it, if you're not vaccinated, it's a matter of when. It's traveling like nobody's business. And will be the hospitalizations. And I'm wondering, and the deaths, and I'm wondering if this is going to cause red state America or red county America, in the case of Oregon, to wake the hell up and go, you know, if Donald Trump lied to us about the virus, what else did he lie to us about? Or do you think that they'll just, like, die still loyal to dear leader and dear party and... I mean, you got Steve Scalise, right? Republican from Louisiana, number three guy or number two guy in Republican leadership in the House, the guy who campaigned saying, I'm David Duke without the baggage. He got a vaccine last week, his first one. This is the Tom Hartman program. Are they getting scared? Are they starting to get religion? Are they waking up? Or, and, and should we feel compassion? Or should we say, hey, the, you made your bed, lay in it. 